And in an hour, Hard Talk with Stephen Sacker. My guest is the Pakistani journalist Hamid Mir. Having survived assassination attempts in the past, he's now facing accusations of sedition for suggesting powerful forces in Pakistan are targeting the free media. Is the deep state out to silence independent journalism? This is the BBC World Service, the world's radio station. Hello, I'm Will Bain and this is World Business Report on the BBC World Service. It's the start of a new business week and we'll be bringing you all the latest business news and opinion from around the world. On the programme today, the $1 trillion US infrastructure bill is creeping closer to being passed. Everyone knows that the American infrastructure is in trouble and needs to be revitalised. If we can't do this in a bipartisan fashion, I fear we can't do anything. We'll hear about the hopes and the fears for a bill that many Americans feel is long overdue. Also on the programme today, why the new UN climate report could set the agenda in the boardroom of some of the biggest companies around the world. That's all to come on World Business Report after the very latest World News. Hello, I'm Eileen McHugh with the BBC News. As international concern mounts over violence in Afghanistan, the Taliban have rejected calls for a ceasefire. The insurgents have seized three more provincial capitals in the course of a day. In the city of Kunduz, government forces appear only to hold their own base and the airport. The provincial capitals of Saripul and Talakan are also largely in militant hands. Paul Adam reports. Amid growing international calls for the Taliban to halt its advance, a spokesman for the group's political office in Doha told the Qatar-based news channel Al Jazeera that there was no agreement on a ceasefire with the Afghan government, and he warned the United States, which has almost finished withdrawing its troops, but is still conducting airstrikes, against any further intervention. Kunduz is probably the Taliban's biggest prize so far, a large city at the heart of a strategically and economically important province. One resident told the BBC the Afghan army had simply left the city. Tokyo has passed the Olympic flag to Paris, the host city for the next summer games. Sixteen days of action had been marked by the pandemic, with the number of spectators cut and athletes confined to their rooms and venues. But a BBC correspondent at the Olympics says the organisers succeeded in their task, despite huge logistical challenges and local opposition to the event. Wildfires are continuing to burn on the Greek island of Evia. Dozens of villages have been evacuated and ferries are on standby to bring more people to safety. Greece's Deputy Civil Protection Minister Nikos Sardalias said emergency crews had made superhuman efforts to combat the fires. The forces working in Evia are increasing constantly. We are dealing with two main fronts at a great distance from each other, in the north and south of the island. In the north, southeasterly wind gusts that can reach four Beaufort are driving the fire towards coastal villages. Ground and air forces are battling this front non-stop, with aircraft dropping water since daybreak. But a BBC correspondent on Evia said many locals felt abandoned by the authorities. Firefighters in California are battling 11 major wildfires across the state. One in the north has now grown into the second largest blaze in the state's history, forcing widespread evacuations of residents. The governor of California, Gary Newsom, said the damage was unprecedented. We recognize we've got to do more in active forest management, vegetation management, pre-positioning of assets, and the state's doing a historic amount in all of those uh, in all those areas. At the end of the day, though, we also have to acknowledge this. The dries are getting a lot drier, and the heat and the hot weather is a lot hotter than it's ever been. The extreme weather conditions, extreme droughts, uh, are leading to extreme conditions uh, and wildfire challenges, likes of which we've never seen in our history. World News from the BBC. An initial survey of people aged over 60 given a third dose of a COVID vaccine in Israel indicates that most recipients felt similar or fewer side effects than they did after their second dose. Israel is one of the first countries to provide a booster shot amid growing concern over the highly contagious Delta variant. The authorities in Chad say that 22 people have been killed and another 18 wounded in fighting between farmers and herders in the western province of Hajar Lamis. 
A government spokesman said troops were deployed to maintain order and that calm had been restored. Tensions between indigenous settled farmers and nomadic Arab herders in the region are long-standing and occasionally erupt into deadly clashes. Chinese state media say virtually the entire population of Wuhan, the city where COVID first surfaced in 2019, has now been tested after a resurgence of the virus. The campaign was announced after seven cases of the Delta variant emerged. The authorities say the tests have revealed 37 locally transmitted COVID cases and 41 asymptomatic carriers. A Wuhan government official, Li Tao, said testing would continue. On the 3rd of August, Wuhan started citywide nucleic acid testing. So far, more than 11.2 million people received tests, basically covering all the municipal population except college students who have returned home from Wuhan for summer vacation and children aged under six. We will continue checking and making arrangements for those who have missed tests. The Indian actor Anupam Sham, renowned for playing villainous characters in Bollywood films, has died in Mumbai at the age of 63. He was admitted to hospital last week with a kidney infection. Sham was a familiar face on television and appeared in films including Bandit Queen and Slumdog Millionaire. BBC News.